Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions? This story does not add up. It is Thursday, September 8th, 2011. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars Nightly News, where hardcore information is covered, where the news behind the news is revealed. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get into the news, and a little bit later, uh, we're going to cover this whole end-of-the-world culture, people that believe in Planet X, Nibiru, uh, Comet, uh, Elenin, we're going to be getting into all of it with Dr. Uh, Agnew. We've got George Humphrey, economist, joining us in studio to talk about uh, the globalist endgame and the fact that they have basically already conquered the planet uh, through financial fraud. That's coming up uh, this evening as well. But first, let's get into some of the other top stories. Wow, Ron Paul last night again won the nbc debate poll won all the other polls he won more than 50 percent of all the votes against all the other candidates and what did nbc do nbc didn't report on him in any of their major stories neither did msnbc they basically ignored the winner and engaged in another scam they put on television that graph you're saying uh, when the poll first started, he had 43% to Mitt Romney's 21. But you notice all the other graphs are proportional. 1.3 is proportional to 2.7. 2.9 is proportional to 4%. 7.8 is proportional to 16.4. 16.4 is proportional to 21.5 of Mitt Romney. But Ron Paul, with 21 plus points more, is looks like he's only barely winning. Then this morning, because of heat... They went ahead and reversed themselves, but still didn't extend it out as far as it should when Ron Paul uh, closed out the poll with 53-plus percent, more than half against all those other candidates. And the dirty tricks didn't stop there. Again, we scoured NBC and MSNBC articles. They would have whole stories about the aftermath and who won. They wouldn't even mention Ron Paul, who clearly was the only constitutional person up there and who's winning the straw polls when he won the second uh, CPAC poll so coveted this year. Fox News dubbed in booing and said it was a mistake when they got caught. The good news here is we're catching them and they're scared. And I'll tell you who else is scared. I was told by a high-level Fox News personality almost a year and a half ago, I talked about it on air at time, that Rick Perry would run, that he'd break a fake pledge not to run, and that he was scared of just a couple people, Ron Paul and Alex Jones. This high-powered individual, off record, called me just to tell me how bizarre this was. Well, you see, he's scared because we know he worked for Al Gore. We know he supported Hillary Care. We know he's a carbon taxer, a gun grabber. We know he's not even the Republican he says he is. And that's, that's bad right there. I'm just a constitutionalist. That he's a total phony. So what happened last night? This is amazing. Uh, during a break, and, and, and now the witnesses have gone public uh, from the media, Perry walked over to Paul, grabbed his arm, and got in his face and uh, was very, very rude to him. And we're still trying to find out exactly what he said, but, but Perry was almost yelling at him, and uh, Ron Paul basically pulled his hand away from him. Uh, and, and now the media has asked both camps to explain exactly what happened. But why did Perry do that? Because he's scared. 
He knows the only real person in that room is Ron Paul, and Rick Perry is trying to become Ron Paul. You know, I've told the story, and Mike Hansen and others are a witness. Uh, what so is uh, so is uh, Raymond. A couple of friends after the TV show we were doing locally in Austin, uh, what four years ago ended. Uh, we went down to eat at Lueva Leon Mexican food restaurant on Sixth Street. And Rick Perry's whole family's in there on the table next to us. I didn't know that at the time, that it was his family. And Rick Perry walks in, gives me a dirty look, walks back out, then gets a security detail to come in and stand by the... By, uh, we were in the back dining hall at the back of the building. It's a big restaurant. And then Perry, once his security was there, walked over and, and leaned over the chair and said, I want you to have a blessed Thanksgiving. I can't remember, was it Christmas? It was a blessed something coming up in a few days. I want you to have a blessed, and it just gave me this crazy look, and then rotated and walked over, and I looked over and almost got in his face, but thought, eh, he's with his family, I'm just going to leave him alone. But but th this is good that he did that, because it shows he's scared. He didn't go and get Mitt Romney's face, another Obamacare globalist carbon taxer. He didn't get Michelle Bachman's face. He didn't get in any of the other little trolls' faces. He got in Ron Paul's face because he is scared. Now, continuing with other news, uh, Natural News has got a big article out. Gibson Guitars proves the environmental police state wants your wood products and guns. That's right. Now they're saying old pianos, old furniture, any type of, quote, endangered wood, even if you've got a 100-year-old piece of furniture or guitar, the green police are coming. Not just for your normal light bulbs, not just for everything else. It just proves what a deep, deep, crazy police state, land of the free, home of the brave, where they arrest people selling lemonade and you can't have a garden in your yard and so much more. Finally, uh, in news, uh, we've got big sis set to zap travelers with MRI-style scans. And Homeland Security head came out and told Politico and others, don't worry, you're not going to have to take your shoes off soon. We've got new scanners coming out. And then they detail that the scanners are MRI. And I went, wait a minute, the New York Times reported people dying from MRIs and getting cancer. And if they're not calibrated right, all your hair will fall out because there's so much radiation. So many powerful magnetic waves going into you. And so n n n uh, not only are they going to bake you with the naked body scanners or make you walk by those open x-ray scanning luggage, now they're going to try to make you fry your feet with an MRI. Do you have any idea what MRI type technology does to metal if it's inside you? I mean, this is this is just unbelievable. But it's even more unbelievable that the TSA workers stand around inside uh, of these facilities, basically being microwaved and baked. They're the ones that are really getting cooked. With more on the seismic global events that are now taking place on our planet. George Humphrey, uh, economist, businessman, former Austin City Council member, good friend of mine now for, well, I met him more than 16 years ago, uh, joins us. And, of course, he's also an author. And George is the first person I heard, not talk about the private Federal Reserve and the New World Order, but to talk about derivatives and how it was a plan to bankrupt all the major pension funds and government systems of the planet and how out of that crisis after they bankrupted the North American Union, the European Union, the Asian Union, they would then bring in this global bank of the world. And I know in his book, Common Sense, and then um, several others, he broke all this down back in the mid and late 1980s. So I wanted to have him here today uh, to discuss the latest developments because it's all unfolding as, just exactly as you said it would, George. <laughs> First of all, it's great to be here, and your new studio is fabulous. And thank you for that introduction. You know, as we, we look back on what I said and what you said and a few others said 12, 15 years ago, we weren't absolutely perfectly right, but the things that we had to say were pretty on base. Well, George, I learned about derivatives from you. Yeah. Never, I mean, I didn't know what that and, term was. And I'm, I'm still, I, I have a degree in economics. I talk about this every single day with some really smart people around the world. And I still don't know all, the, everything about them. I'm still learning about it because they're such complex instruments. But it doesn't take a PhD in economics to figure out when they took down the Glass-Steagall Act, which was put in after the Great Depression 
to stop the runaway betting on, on, on finances that were going on. The Glass-Steagall Act was the breaks between the financial houses and the banks in this country, that, and it worked very, very well for 60-some-odd years. And then the absolute monsters, the Goldman Sachs, the J.P. Morgans, and the other large financial houses come in, deregulate, and all, and it didn't, it didn't take much to figure out that when you start having these non-regulated derivatives in which the financial houses are able to leverage their, quote, investments at 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 50 to 1, at 100 to 1, and as the market, especially the high-tech market, was going up and up and up, and this was all off the records, untold amounts of not billions or hundreds of billions, but tens of trillions of dollars were, were, were being funneled into the hands of a very, very few number of people. And they used that to consolidate power and then to get everybody basically indebted to them. And, yeah. and specifically, George, uh, I mean, you really did specifically on your TV shows, radio shows, and in your books and audio cassettes. I mean, I remember listening to them. You broke down the derivative time bomb. Uh, you talked about how it was infecting all the other investments, how they would engage in too big to fail and hold everybody hostage, and, and then announce a new Ponzi scheme on top of that. And now... In Europe, they're calling it a private yes. financial union. Yes. They're saying all sovereignty left in those countries will be transferred to this private group. Uh, Soros says Eurozone crisis could be even worse than Lehman. Yes. He said that was a great crisis for him. UBS head, uh, that's the uh, biggest bank in Switzerland, Euro collapse could lead to martial law civil war if you don't give the banks this new power. Right. And, and then listening to Bloomberg Radio the other night, they had five experts on in a row all reading the same script, almost word for word, that this is reasonable, it's good, uh, you know, the, 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 the mega banks are taking over. I saw uh, six months ago with the big Ireland crisis, uh, as soon as they signed on the euro, suddenly they implode, and their head, right. uh, a central banker said, a quote, he said, it's good to have foreign banks run us. So, so they're hiding in view incredible economic conquest through fraud, and most of the money isn't even owed by the governments of the people. Fraud is an understatement. This is the most massive transfer of funds in the history of mankind, away from the working middle classes of not only the United States, but all of Western, of all the Western countries. I just got back from six weeks traveling through Western Europe, through, through the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and France, and in Iceland. And you have two different situations. There is no question in my mind that the European Union financially is in as bad or worse shape than the United States. And the United States is so far gone. I mean, it's, 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 not, even, it's not even a game. But it is anymore. by design from your it research. Is, it's absolutely by design. What's now, the end game then? Well, the end game, as you and I both know, is power. With this handful, what we call the power elite, it's not about money because there is no such thing as money. They have all the credit. They have all what we call the money in the world. But money, this money is only the, the strings of the puppeteer to get full control of the world. It's just fake monopoly garbage. Chips they issue to us in their rigged casino. We'll sell it our mothers, our daughters, our fathers, our sons. Kill grandma for a stick of bubble gum, and it's all just a fake symbol of energy yes. that we accept from the money changers. So where is this going now that we've you predicted this 14 years ago with incredible precision, uh, you know, on paper publicly? What's coming in the next phase if their plan succeeds? versus the resistance and awakening that clearly is mounting. Well, their plan has already succeeded. However, the plan is faulty because what we call the truth movement, the resistance, people who believe in the rule of law, 
people who listen to the Alex Jones show, people who care. They've taken over through fraud, yeah. so we wake up from the illusion, it's over. Yeah, it's 